Endoscopic strip craniectomy is a relatively newer way of treating synostosis in which we use small incisions to separate fused skull bones. So in the normal course of events, a baby's head is made of about five separate major bones, but in one in about every 2,000 babies, two or more of those bones fuse together. With the endoscopic strip craniectomy, we could separate those bones in a very small operation. When endoscopic strip craniectomy, the procedure generally involves making an incision that is perpendicular to the fused sutures. And keep in mind, these sutures can be anywhere along the skull, so the incisions are in different places based on the suture. But we make one or two incisions that are each about one inch in length. They're perpendicular to the suture, and then using drills and other special equipment, including an endoscope, we remove the entirety of the fusion so that those two bones are separated at the end. Most babies that have premature fusion of the skull bones will be a candidate for endoscopic strip craniectomy. There are some cases where the child's either too old or the fusions are too complex to consider this minimally invasive operation. Because the skull is growing very rapidly in the first three to six months of life, to do endoscopic strip craniectomy, we really want to act early. So the average age at surgery is about three months of age, although we always wait until the child reaches five kilograms. So we can do the operation generally up to six months, although we think the results are better if you do it closer to three months of age. After doing an endoscopic strip craniectomy and freeing up the skull bones, we now have to catch up with mother nature. So if the head is, for instance, overly long, we would use a helmet that keeps the length in check and allows the width to grow sort of in a two to one basis relative to the length. So the helmet is really a key part of the operation. We do the operation and then three to seven days later, the child's fit for a helmet and we'll wear that generally up to six or nine months. Something that's relatively unique here at Boston Children's Hospital is we've, we've actually been able to use the endoscopic strip craniectomy for Apert syndrome. So we know that in Apert syndrome, you need an early operation to prevent the excessive growth and the height of the head. And that's a pretty difficult problem to deal with if you haven't dealt with it early. A lot of centers are doing a big operation on the back of the skull, even though the fuse sutures are not in the back of the skull. They'll move out the bones in the back just to prevent the height. What we've been doing is releasing the fused coronal sutures. Those are the ones up in the front of the head, doing that in the three month range, and then using a helmet, which allows the length of the head to grow and avoids the excessive growth and the height of the head. Here at Boston Children's Hospital, we have a very collaborative approach to the treatment of synostosis. When we do big cranial reconstructions, it's always me operating along with Dr. John Mira, the chair of plastic surgery, who's an expert in craniofacial surgery. For the endoscopic strip craniectomies, all we're doing is removing the bone. There's no reconstruction or reshaping of the skull at the time of surgery. So that's an operation done just by the neurosurgery team.